friends in the last lecture we have discussed the bernoulli's theorem we have been derived the formula for the bernoulli's theorem bernoulli's equation as well as the applications of bernoulli's theorem we have seen in detail that was the filter pump and another one is law of hydrostatic pressure these were the two applications of that now we can across possible formula which is concerned with the viscosity we have seen in the previous classes the experiments for the viscosity stokes theorem and all these things now here we will see the possible formula how it is derived for that purpose we have to perform a experiment or series experiment that experiment already in our uh, it is nothing but a laboratory experiment and it is in your syllabus also in a practical syllabus also see you can easily see we are we will be able to see here this is nothing but instrument for performing the experiment of a postulate see this is nothing but a water reservoir see now this having or three terminals out of which one is inlet it is connected to the tap and water enters in this jar in this reservoir and another one is connected to this tube this tube and another one is a uh, when this is fulfilled then it is nothing but a pore flow we can say this these are the three terms we will see how this works in this lecture we will try to understand this experiment and afterwards we will see how we have to derive the formula see now let liquid be flowing through a horizontal capillary tube of length n see now this is a horizontal capillary tube which having the length n then what he says and it having a radius r means this capillary in this capillary there is a water and having a diameter d d by 2 is r r is the radius and it having a constant pressure difference p across two it's a two ends this is one end this is one end. and these two ends having a constant pressure see for this here the capillary tube is attached by the help of a rubber tube and for giving the pressure a pressure cock is there see now to obtain an expression for its rate of flow 
to the tube in terms of its coefficient of viscosity, we have to make some assumptions. We have to make some statements. See, as per that statement, the first statement is the flow of the liquid is steady and steadily. See, when we have to perform the actual experiment, at that time we have to maintain a steady flow, a stream flow, means it should not a uh, turbulent or there should not be a difference in the uh, velocity of that flowing liquid. With the stream means all parallel to the axis of the tube means that the X flow should be parallel to the axis of the tube. There being no radial flow means there should not be a, a radial flow. The pressure should be a constant over every cross section of the tube. Means every where the pressure for this liquid it should be a same or a constant pressure. The liquid layer in contact with the sides of the tube remains stationary. See, this is a, an important aspect concerned with the uh, viscosity. The layers which are contact with the tube, it should be remains a stationary bit, it should be a stationary vacuum. Then the liquid is to just a small, the small, small sharing space and the tube is horizontal so that gravity does not affect that flow. See, this is a typographical mistake. Therefore, or the liquid is to just a small sharing space and the tube is a horizontal so that gravity does not affect that flow. Now, by these assumptions, we have to consider a cylindrical layer or a cell. See, again, imagine water is coming through this. Pressure is maintained here. Again, quantity of water enters in this field. And here is also the same thing. Due to which these are two limbs shows some ready. This will be upper, this will be lower. We have to note it. Then we will see how it works. In the actual we will perform this experiment in the laboratory also. At that time we, you will get a, a much more idea. Until uh, uh, we will see theoretically here. Now we will consider a cylindrical layer or cell of liquid coaxial in the tube. And which having a radius here, we are considering a radius as x. The velocity of a flow is a v. Since the velocity of the layer in contact with the walls of the tube is zero, see here the velocity of the layer in contact with the wall of the tube is zero and goes on increasing towards the axis. Means it is zero, friction less. We are, we are going to consider a friction less. Therefore, it is a zero and it goes on increasing at inner side towards, means towards its axis. Then, the friends here, the backward tangential force due to the outer slower moving liquid on the inner faster moving liquid is given by eta 2 pi x into L into dv by dx. Here, this uh, eta is nothing but the coefficient of viscosity of the liquid and 
A is nothing but the surface area of the cylindrical cell of liquid and it is equal to the respect to pi x into L. Where again here L is nothing but the length of the capillary tube and dv by dx is the velocity gradient. In this way here uh, this uh, eta 2 pi x into L into dv by dx uh, this shows the Posidis formula. Again in next uh, lecture we will see uh, yeah, again we will derive it up to certain extent um, in, uh, up to that you have to uh, uh, keep in mind this uh, eta 2 pi x into L into dv by dx then we will see in uh, remaining part in next lecture thank you